It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Who are you outside of your roles and responsibilities? I recently put a Facebook post up that said, I dare you to get to know who you are outside of your roles and responsibilities. You are a person, a human first. And boy, does that get the comment section lit up. A lot of people saying, yes, absolutely. It took me a long time to discover this, but I'm here quickly followed with, I can't, I have too many children, I have too many responsibilities, life is too demanding. So on today's Power Back episode, we're going to break that down a little further. In fact, if I asked you to tell me who you are without describing your title, roles, or responsibilities, what would you say? Before we dig into this kind of Sour Patch Kid episode, <laughs> it's first it's sour and then it's sweet, I promise you, it's, it's an adventure here. I want to let you know that the wait list for the next Mindfuckery workshop is open. If you go to lauraora.com, there's a banner at the top of the page where you can put in your email. This is one of my most popular classes. So getting on the wait list, make sure that you are one of the first to get the one discount code, but two first access to register. If you've been questioning, okay, I want to do this next thing. I want to grow. I want to evolve, but I can't quite seem to get out of my own head. This class, my friend, is the how. Together in a very supportive group, we walk through how to get out of your own way so that you can move forward and actually feel pretty good about doing it. So if that's ringing your bell, go to lauraor.com and jump on the wait list so I can send you all the details whenever it launches. All right, my friend, I want to dig into this episode and I'm going to let you know, I'm, I'm going to cut this real sharp today. And not from a place of like, you're doing something wrong, but in a place where we just collectively need to call out some things and hold one another accountable. Because settling, and that's what a lot of this is, settling for the fact that you don't have the time, the ability, the energy to discover who you are, to own who you are as a person, regardless of what your responsibilities are in your life, right there, my friend, is one of the root challenges of this topic. I also want you to know that I have an incredible amount of empathy and understand that everyone has different levels of life and responsibility. So I'm not discounting that there are things that are pulling you away from what you truly want to do. I'm not discounting the fact that you have a lot of people that rely on you. I'm challenging you to not settle for that truth for the rest of your life. Because while there may be seasons, there may be trying times, there may be big things happening, hiding behind that for the rest of your life, using it as a buffer or an excuse even sometimes to not figure out who you are, that's that's what we're not doing anymore, okay? So when I posted this on Facebook, I am really into stream of consciousness posts. So if you don't follow me already on Facebook, I'm at that Laura Aura. I I get these downloads, I get these intuitive hits where I'm like, this is something that someone needs to hear right now. So I just go on my app and I post a couple of sentences. And lo and behold, these are almost always outside of my reels. These are almost always my top performing posts because they just resonate with people. And this happened to be one of those posts that got a mixed bag of emotions. So again, the post was, I dare you to get to know who you are outside of your roles and responsibilities. You are a person first. Now, I want to tell you some of the comments that I got on this post, because some of these may resonate with you. How? How? From a single mom, how do I do this? Knowing who I am is one thing. The demands of my life don't change. I have five kids that takes up 99% of my time. There's no time for me. Getting to know myself is the hardest thing. Any of that ring true for you? Now, again, I am 100% full bodied, standing up, clapping, understanding that life does 
have challenges, that kids take up a shit ton of time and energy, that life can pull you in a hundred different directions, that you might be in the thick of a season where you don't even know your ass from a hole in the ground. So I'm not discounting any of that, okay? This episode is intended to help you see things a little bit differently and to start opening up the possibility that, you know what? I am in here. I do matter. Even when shit gets wild or hairy or big or confusing or hard, that I still get to be my own person alongside that. And while some moments, some situations may make it harder to prioritize myself, I still put focus on me. Why? Because I matter. There were also a handful of amazing comments talking about, I wish I would have known this sooner. I wish I would have explored this before. I didn't realize that I could be a caretaker and my own person. And one of my favorite comments was a gal named Susan. She said, don't expect the process to be complete. And I was like, oh yes, Susan, like (laughs) that is the fire because we're continuously evolving, right? Like you're not the same person today as you were a year ago or 10 years ago or five months ago. You're continuously growing and evolving. So it's, it's always this journey of getting to know who you are in the season and where you're headed next. And one more comment that I want to share, and then we'll get into some of the how stuff is responsibility is all that I know. I've always taken care of someone or something. And I think that right there, that comment is the baseline of what we're chatting about today. Because if you have been put in a position where people rely on you, people come to you, maybe it's the family, maybe it's the business, maybe it's at work. If you're like me, an oldest daughter, walking around knowing that so many things and people rely on you can feel really daunting. It's very heavy and and you get what's left of you. But that's the cycle that I want us to start to break. That's the cycle that I want us to say, hold on a second. What if I question why that is the norm instead of questioning who I am? What if I push back and say, you know what? I'm no longer willing to settle for that in my role. And instead you say, I have so much to give outside of these roles and responsibilities. And I have so much more that I want to explore for myself. So what if I asked you right now here in this moment to tell me who you are? What would you say? You would likely start it off with, I'm a mom, I'm a boss, I'm a wife, I'm a spouse, I'm a partner, I'm a caretaker, I'm a volunteer, I'm a business owner, I'm the master of all things science, I don't know. You're you're more than likely going to start off the description of you with who you are to other people. Okay, let me say that again you're likely going to respond with who you are to other people. But you see, the interesting part about this question is I didn't ask you what you do. I asked you who you are. Now, look, I'm not saying that these these beautiful roles and responsibilities are not a portion of who you are. I am also a wife. I am a mother. I am a business owner. Yes, these are all very important roles in my world. But when someone asks me who you are, tell me about yourself, I don't start with that. I used to because that's just what we do, right? Like that's what we've been trained to say. But getting to know yourself, now that's a whole different basket of fucking eggs now, isn't it? Because you know who you are within these roles and responsibilities. You know what is expected of you. You know what is needed of you. And when you start to branch out of that and you get a little in the wild zone, that's where your your stillness comes into play. You're looking in the mirror, physically and theoretically. That's where, my friend, you're being asked to be honest with yourself. Who am I outside of these roles and responsibilities? It's an uncomfortable fucking question, especially if you've never gone down that path. So when I ask you the question, tell me who you are. I challenge you to start to write down or journal out or feel out what that answer might be 
without naming your titles, roles, or responsibilities. Now, again, this is not saying that those things are not important. This is where your mind wants to be a little ninja fuck and come in and be like, oh, you don't care about your kids. Oh, you don't care about your spouse. Oh, you don't care about your business. Um, yes, I care about all those things incredibly fucking deeply. And, and I also care about myself. In this question, I want to get to know you, you as a human you as a person, the person that gets to show up for those other roles and responsibilities. The next question that pops up and the most popular comment on this Facebook post was how, how Laura, how do I do that? How do I get to know myself? How do I start to experiment with this? Now, look, I I just want you to know that this is going to look different for everyone. And your season might look different than the next person's season, which looks different than my season. And all of that is okay because it's yours. But regardless of what season you're in in life, the first thing, the non-negotiable, if you even want to go down this path, first and foremost, is first you have to acknowledge that you're important in the first place. You have to acknowledge that you are your own person outside of the roles and responsibilities. And if that is a no-go for you, if that's like a, nope, I'm not interested, then there's literally no reason to continue listening to this episode. However, I'm going to bet that if you're listening to this, it's because you're ready for growth. You're ready to figure out who you are. You're ready to rediscover parts of yourself and to reclaim that of you. And my friend, that begins with acknowledging that you are your own person first. You have your own wants and needs and desires and interests. And if you believe that none of those things are possible or important, then you'll never achieve them. You'll never experience that feeling in your life. But, but what if you started to lean into the possibility that, you know what, maybe Laura's a little right here. I do have things that I want to do. I do have parts of me that I've kind of put in a box and tucked away for a rainy day. I do have aspects of my personality that that want to come out. If you really start to believe, even if it's just a little percentage, I'm not saying you're flinging open the door and all of a sudden you went from, I have no idea who I am to I have everything figured out. No, it's a process. It's a growth. It's an evolution. It's a journey. But if you have even just a little tiny sliver of belief in it, my friend, you start to crack that door open. Now you've got something to work with here. Now you can start to explore this further. And so my next point, little Sour Patch Kid moment here, (laughs) is that you've got to cut the bullshit attachment to the roles and responsibility. And before somebody wants to come at me with a fucking pitchfork, again, I'm not discounting that these things are one super important, and two, sometimes very taxing. What I am saying is that sometimes after a period of time of these things pulling at you, it's easy for this to become a habit. And what I mean by this is this attachment to that you come last. Yes, you have responsibilities, but you may have gotten used to hiding behind them. Remember earlier when I was saying that, you know, when you really get to know yourself, this is like standing naked with yourself and and being very vulnerable and saying like, hey, I, I really want this. Or hey, I'm really interested in this. When you get this attachment to these responsibilities, then you get to hide behind the expectations, behind the things that you already know, behind the things that are expected of you. Because chances are, you know how to nail that. You know what to do. You know how to navigate it. You know how to show up. And then sometimes we get really connected with the belief that there is no time for yourself anymore. And something that piggybacks very loudly is that there is this, dare I say, societal belief that owning yourself takes away from other people. That getting to know who you are and doing things that bring you joy take away 
from your roles, responsibilities, and titles. Like you can love yourself and enjoy your life just as much as you show up and take care of the things and people that you need to do. It's not a one or the other here. And that's the bullshit attachment that I'm talking about. This black and white, it has to be one way or the other. That comes back to your belief system, my friend. Again, there may be just a, a minimal amount of time because you're, uh, you're a caretaker or you're running a business or you've got three toddlers at home. All of that shit is very taxing, but it's not that or you. Taking care of yourself, investing in yourself, getting to know yourself does not equate to you being a bad mother. It doesn't make you an irresponsible caretaker, and it most certainly does not make you a shitty leader. You've heard this before. I know you have, but I'm going to tell you again in case today it penetrates a little bit differently. When you are fulfilled, even if it's within five minutes a day, You get to show up in all of those roles and responsibilities in a very different way, as a more vibrant you, as a more rested you, as a more connected you. And therefore, you get to be a better version of you, not just for you, but for those people as well. Please, I am begging you today to stop hiding behind the roles and responsibilities and stop accepting and and really embodying that it has to be one way or the other. There will be times when you have more time than others. There will be seasons when you have more time than others. But regardless of how demanding things are, there has to be a belief system that you are your own person and you are willing and prioritizing keeping connected with that version of yourself. Because it's you, it's you my friend. So the next thing then on the list is making the time. Now look, again, put the pitchforks down, please, today. I understand that time is a whole ass thing. I mean, that's usually one of the biggest reasons that people don't go down this road to explore this is because I don't have time. My kids are all over the place. I have to do this. I have 40 errands to run. I've got 800 emails to answer. I got this. I got that. I got that. I don't have time for myself. I don't have time to figure it out. I don't have time to journal. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to launch the business. I literally call bullshit on every single one of those things. There's a very big difference between not having time and not making time. Because here's how I know. Here's why I call bullshit. Okay, listen to me. If one of your kiddos or your aging parent or someone on your team came to you and was like, hey, I really need to do this or go there. And I need you to be the one that does it. You will bend over backwards to make that shit happen. Rearranging schedules, adjusting things, moving shit around, finding financial means. It's like you you turn into this creative powerhouse where you're like, you know what? Rubik's Cube. I got it. And I think that's just such a beautiful trait that you are willing to go to so many lengths to take care of the people in your world. I mean, that speaks volumes for who you are as a person. So my question is, why aren't you doing that for yourself? There is a way for just about anything if you prioritize it. This is why I'm calling bullshit on I don't have time. You may not have a shit ton of time. You might not be conquering the world tomorrow. That's okay. But if it's important to you and you believe you're important enough, you will find a way. And some of those ways might be first asking for help. I know you're a superhuman. You don't have to do everything yourself, my friend. And then usually the next backup is, well, I don't have help. Okay, then hire help. Your local community and the internet is full of all kinds of people that are ready and willing to help you with something. And then usually the follow-up to that is, I can't afford help. Okay, if that's very true in this season of your life, then ask for volunteers. Go to your community center. Go to your church. Go to your local high school. People want to help you. You've just got to let them. And this taps back into that belief system of, I am worth exploring. I am worth living as me. And now in this case, I am worth asking for help. 
Help is not a bad thing, my friend. Help is a, a superpower. And when you tap into that and you start to really feel the relief from that, whew, I promise you, it, it gets a lot easier to ask moving forward. The next tip that I want to share with you is about being realistic with yourself and reframing what's possible. Because oftentimes, especially if you have a dense role or responsibility or season, it's easy to look at the big things that you want to do and why you can't have them or do them. Then that fuels the mindset that, see, here it is. I'm never going to have time. I'll just deal with this later. And then months, years, decades go by. But if we catch that thought a little earlier on in the process and reframe it to something that is realistic, there we have something to work with and mold. So for instance, you want to travel the world. That's something that's really important to you. But right now you're caring for aging parents and you're the primary caretaker. You're the one that's handling out of things. There's a lot of appointments back and forth. You're all over the place. Like you're the person. So traveling the world right now feels fucking impossible. Okay, this is a season. This is where you get to reframe. So maybe traveling the world right now isn't obtainable, but you know what is? An afternoon away, a weekend getaway, exploring or trying a new restaurant in the town next to yours. Is this world travel? Is this the big picture thing that you want to do? Not yet, but it's a little taste of that. It's acknowledging that this is important to me and I get to make time. You can find volunteers, you can find people at the community center, you can find people within religious organizations. There are all kinds of people that are ready and willing to step up. And this comes back to asking for help. Maybe you are ready to either start a business or expand your business. But let's be honest, you've got three kids at home, two of which are in diapers, one's writing on the wall, one's getting off the school bus, one needs to go to practice tomorrow. There's just kid shit everywhere. And yet you still have this passing thought of starting the business or growing what you've already built. Okay, let's look at the season that you're in. Let's reframe what's possible. Is it that you can't start the business? Is it that you can't grow the business? No, it just means that right now in this particular season, taking on a global company may not be the right fit. I'm not saying that's not possible, but I'm saying for you, it may not be the right time, but you know what you can do is get realistic about what's possible by taking smaller steps, by taking your iPad or your phone while you're sitting in the car at practice and researching something. Kids in the back seat are taking a nap. The other one's doing their thing. You've got maybe a half an hour to yourself. Maybe you contact your local high school and you have some high schoolers come in and babysit or do community service in your home with you to give you a couple of hours each week to focus, fully focus on the next steps of building your business. You see, in all these different scenarios, we get attached to the outcome. I can't do the big thing. And so therefore I can't do any of it. But if you really hone in and say, you know what, this is important to me. I get to still be a great caretaker. I get to still be a great mother and, and I get to build a business and I get to travel. And as those seasons shift and change, you get to lean into these things in a new and different way. So my last tip for you today is to get to know yourself again, because chances are, if you're listening to this episode, you have been something and someone to and for everyone else for a really long fucking time. And I want to love on you for a second for that because I know how that feels. I've also been that person. And I want you to know that it is incredibly possible to rediscover yourself, to get to know yourself again, to find yourself in the midst of all of these things happening. So this is a really great time to journal or to meditate or to take a walk. Again, you have to prioritize the time to go through this exercise. I mean, you're listening to this episode. So that tells me that you're making some time to listen to some things, even if it's in the midst of doing other stuff. So some things to consider are what feels interesting to me? What's something that I've always wanted to do, but haven't been able to yet? What feels nurturing or healthy or fulfilling to me right now? 
what's something that I'm really craving, something I want to do or try. And then I want you to really feel into and journal out a time that you felt most like you. What was going on in your life? What were some characteristics that made you feel like yourself, alive, vibrant, connected, strong, powerful, whatever those descriptive words are. Remember a time where you really, really, truly felt like yourself and write those characteristics down. Because if you start to see them again, you can start to remember why they're important to you. And if you remember why they're important to you, then you can start to prioritize the embodiment of that again, the infusion of those things in your world again. And if you want to take it one step further, reconnect with your inner child. Remember who she is. And I'm not even going to say was because she still lives inside of you. What What did she love to do? What were some of her personality traits and characteristics? What made her, her? Look, my friend, I know that life can throw a flaming bag of dog shit at you sometimes. I know that your roles and responsibilities feel big and daunting and heavy and impossible sometimes. And maybe you're in one of those seasons right now. And if you are, I extend so much love to you. Like I literally just wrap my arms around you. Because I know firsthand that sometimes just a really good hug can allow you to release the weight of the responsibility. And I also know that sometimes you just need the permission that you don't need, but maybe need to hear to know that it's okay to also be you. It's okay to prioritize who you are and what you need. It's okay to take time out. It's okay to ask for help. But if none of those things happen, then nothing changes. You want to start to feel better. You want to start to feel more like yourself. You want to be a better version of you, not just for you, but for the people in your world. Then get to know yourself again, my friend. Prioritize who you are. Get to know who that is and make the time for you. This is a subject that's pretty close to my heart. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper with some guidance, I have an on-demand class. It's 49 bucks. It's called Rediscover You. We'll make sure to put a link in the show notes of this episode because this could be a really amazing first step for you. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, connect with me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. If there's something that really stood out to you, or if there's something that you want to learn more about, send me a message. I am absolutely the one that is responding to you. I absolutely love to stay connected with you. So please shoot me a message. And as always, my friend, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.